Hey right guys, Trace Munters Joe here, and today we are going to be doing a character tier list for Priest Little Liars Original Sin. I didn't plan to do this, and then I was watching the last three episodes, and I was like, you know what? Why not? There's quite a lot of characters, actually. <laughs> I thought maybe we'd have, like, the main liars and then another four or five, but including all the mums, all the parents, all the side characters, I think we're coming up to, like, 24 here or something. There's quite, quite a few to get through, and we have Best of the Best, The Greats, you're okay, I guess, Peasants, and then right at the bottom we have Spencer's British accent, because it doesn't get much worse than Spencer's British accent, so, you know, I guess it's more Troyan's British accent. Hmm... I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll just blame Spencer for that one, I think. I don't really want to... I don't feel right blaming Troy for that one. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, yeah, I, I actually ended up enjoying parts of Pretty Little Lies Original Sin. It was definitely... It, I watched the finale, well, all three episodes that they released yesterday. Uh, so, still very fresh in my mind, and it hasn't, it hasn't been renewed yet, so I don't know if there's going to be a second season. But I think most people were satisfied with the finale. I'm not 100% sure yet, but we'll, we'll see. I'm going with most people are going to be okay with it. Like I said, for me, I was never invested in the A reveal or anything like that. So uh, the side stories and parts they had going on, I think, for the most part, ended pretty well. Some ended very abruptly. And also, full spoilers for Season 1, because I'm going to be talking about all these characters and the fates that they <laughs> went through and the journeys they went through in the at least the first season of Pretty Little Lies Original Sin. Uh, but yeah, like with Mouse, for example, where her storyline just ended in Episode 9, it was like, oh, okay, that's that then, I guess. Um, also, I put up a poll, which we're going to check now. I've not looked at the results yet, but I asked on YouTube only 12-ish hours ago, so it's not going to have the most in-depth results. So probably like 100 or 150 replies and votes on it. But uh, asking for who everyone thought the best liar was out of... So my prediction is I'm going to say either Farron or Noah. I think most people are going to have voted for. So let's have a look. Who we got, who we got, who we got. Out of 369 votes, more than I thought, and we have Farron at 37%, just smashed it. Good, good. Imogen at number two. Wow, at 21%, that's surprising. But to be fair with Imogen, she, out of all of them, is the one who improved the most as each episode went on. Then in third place, we have Noah with 18%, 18% uh, Tabitha, or Tabby at 16%, and then Mouse with 7%. Jeez, way lower than I thought she was going to do. So Mouse, I'm assuming, is like the least... Well, this is based off 369 votes from people who are subscribed to my channel, so it's not... Again, it's not going to be the most accurate in-depth results, but yeah, I guess it's kind of a broad example of kind of what people people like when it comes to the main five lies. So Farron, I'm glad about that. I'm glad about that. Farron... I might agree. I'm not going to spoil who my number one is, so <laughs> I might agree with that one. But yeah, let's get into the characters anyway. I'm going to probably speed run through some of these characters, but we'll try to talk a little bit about them. And sorry about some of the images. Some of these images were really hard to find for other characters, so I just had to go screenshot some. Um, but some are just like poor. Uh, they're not too bad, but uh, yeah, we'll start with the mums. So the, I'm going to be bad with names. I've got original sin up here with the characters, so Marjorie is this character. I might have to jump back and forth <laughs> between some of these character names. I know the main lot, but when it comes to the mums, I'm bad with. Um, I think all the mums were pretty terrible. So, I'm going to... But Marjorie wasn't as bad. At the end, she did say she was going to go into rehab, which is something she should have done. I say she wasn't as bad, and she did let her daughter take the fall for her using drugs. So... There is that little minute detail. Tiny, tiny detail, but she did be doing that. So I'm going to put in peasants. I think I might just speed run the mums and put them all in peasants because none of them were nice people. As we learned from the flashbacks, they all bullied to death. Uh, whatever her name was, Angela. Where is she on here? Angela. So they all bullied her literally to death. So that's... Yeah, you, you kind of have an upward battle to fight in terms of being a good character, or at least a likeable character, when that's your start. And I know they had a whole thing at the end about how they've all changed and stuff as people, but we watch them as adults, and not really. If they've changed so much, how come she was letting her daughter take the fall? She was tracking her daughter, so that was wild. Uh, she was keeping secrets from her daughter, but they were all kind of doing that. She was 
mentally abusing her daughter because of a disability, so she was no better. Uh, she was probably not as bad as some of them, but Tabby's mum... What was the worst thing Tabby's mum kind of did in her adult life? Probably just neglected Tabby, like really didn't try to make an effort with her, I guess, but... Yeah, that's not as bad as some of these others, I guess. So we're gonna we're gonna put all the parents in bad. I'd say she was worse than her. Uh, she was the worst out of the lot. Like what she did to Farron was wild. And so uh, when she was like, "I'm going to be staying here," and everyone was like, "Yeah," and I was like, "Oh yeah, great." <laughs> Who wants her in the town? What? <laughs> but yeah, sure. I guess her and Farron are on good terms now also something that they didn't really show but i guess is a thing so she's probably the most likable mum out of all of them still pretty and i might actually put her in okay i like that when tabby told her about the rape and stuff she the mum acted on it which i liked like the when she went off on uh what was his name wes she's like protecting her daughter there and then try, uh, talking to tabby about it a couple of times as well so out of all of them, I felt like she was the one who made the most effort, even though her whole thing was about how she neglects her daughter. So, uh, yeah. But Imogen's mum's hard. We got the least amount of her, obviously. But based on what we saw, I'd probably put it there. Um, it felt like her, and it's kind of actually a bit of a shame, because it felt like out of all of them, based on the flashbacks, Imogen and... I need to get a name up. What was her name? Imogen and... Mm -mm -mm -mm, Davy. I would have never guessed that in a million years, <laughs> to be honest. But it felt like they actually kind of had the closest bond out of all of the parents and stuff. But obviously that was kind of short-lived when she died in the first scene. So, uh, yeah, we'll put her there for now. But that's all the parents. Oh, no, it's not actually. We have Zeke somewhere. Zeke. I could only find an image of him and her together. But Zeke's kind of cool. We'll put Zeke there. <laughs> yeah, Zeke might go down. Or the actor who played Zeke might go down. was one of the best actors ever. He's very good at pulling facial mannerisms. He... He did a lot of that. There's <laughs> that one scene where there's a table and he just like kept cutting to him like doing a disappointed face or a confused face or a concerned face. There was a there was a lot of that. So yeah, hopefully we get more Zeke story. <laughs> get more of Zeke in season two. Right, who else we got? Of course we had the, the worst parents in the whole show. Um Kelly's dad. Maybe we'll save him. I think I have Kelly's mum here. Oh, no, I don't. I was going to, but then I was like, I don't really have a lot to say about Kelly's mum. She did kind of do a badass moment, though. If Kelly's mum was here, I'd put her in okay, I think. Right, the principal peasant. Yeah, probably worse than her and worse than her. Probably worse than her as well. Yeah, she was just kind of abusive of, I think, yeah, abusive of a power more so than anything, I think, like, fucking around with Farron over and over again, like, changing her mind constantly. It was like, oh, okay, what's going on here? I think she was meant to be more of a villain than she actually was. Because when she was in, like, the big saw trap at the end for Farron, it was like, ah, oh, take your revenge. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, I don't think she was that bad. I felt like she was meant to be worse than she actually was. But, yeah, she did change her mind a lot when it came to Farron. And there were some things that she said, in the, more so in the earlier episodes, that were a bit wild. But, uh, yeah, that's... I'm not I'm not going to be too upset if she's not in season two. We'll put it that way. She wasn't that good of a villain, and she wasn't likable in any way, so she can stay down in peasants. No one really cares for her. Who else we got? Let's go with... I want to leave the main five, or six, I guess, if you include Karen. Uh, Kelly and Karen, but more so Kelly. Uh, till the end. Let's do... Uh, what was his name? It wasn't Chip. It was... Uh, Henry? Who's Tyler? I've, I think I've missed out a few characters here, to be honest. <laughs> it's fine. No no one's bothered about Tyler, surely. Oh, wait, was Tyler the, the bully who died? Well, the bully is a bit more than a bully, but I think he's the guy who died. Um, the start. What was this this guy's name? It's not here. It was it was Farron's love interest. Yeah, that, or is it Corey? Maybe it's Corey. <laughs> Uh, I just finished the show and I, it shows how little I care about this romance, I guess. They, they felt like they could have been alright, but they just dropped it very quickly. He's okay. I'm going to put him there. I like that he did look out for Farron. They did have chemistry. But he, in terms of an actual character, he's a little bit stink. 
he just didn't really do anything. He just bimbled about. He when he was doing his dancing, he was sniffing some asses, which was I don't know what that was about, but he was doing his thing. At least he wasn't a villain like Chip or like this guy was ridiculous. Ash wasn't that much of a villain. <laughs> I don't know why I was going to go to Ashton. Like think of some Ashton did. Uh, Wes was a bit wild in. So yeah, he was, out of all the guys, he's probably the most likable. Apart from Ash. I think Ash was a bit boring at the start, but we might as well do Ash while we're talking about him. Ash was a bit boring at the start, but I think Ash kind of got better. It was... The problem with Ash is a lot of their storyline was just their romance with Mouse. And that was it. It was like, uh, okay. And that was probably one of the weaker romances, honestly. I never really bought it. It just kind of felt a bit... Not forced. I think the actors were okay on screen together, but I just felt like we didn't really build on it. And then you had, like, Mouse's solo story, which was all over the place anyway, so... And then, like, introducing Ash to this fake dad that you've made, it's just like, okay, I'm not really going to get invested in, in this romance. So, Ash wasn't too bad. Not great, though, so I'm going to put Ash in okay, probably below this guy. This guy was more likable early on. Ash, I wanted to like more than I did, but... Yeah, we didn't. I don't think we had enough. I don't think we had enough. So, uh, who else we got? Where's the other love interest? Well, I say love interest. Um, not so much anymore. But Chip, the big. I mean, he kind of has to go down in Spencer's British accent, though. I mean, he's a rapist, so yeah, he can't really put you above. And I think the difference is, if you look at Thirteen Reasons Why, I think with Bryce, I seem to remember when I did the tier list of that, Bryce wasn't. I think for like the first few... I can't remember how many tier lists I did with certain reasons why, to be honest. But there's one of the tier lists towards the end of the show where Bryce wasn't at the bottom. He he is a rapist. But I remember they made him an actual character and there were actual some like good scenes with Bryce. So I again, I should point out with these tier lists, even if there's a villain on screen, it depends how good of a villain that character actually is. I again always use the example of Gus from Breaking Bad or Walter White from Breaking Bad. They are bad people, but they always go at the top of the top because they're amazing, amazing characters. Chip is not Walter White or <laughs> or Gus. So as a villain and as a character, he was trash to be like his romance with Imogen kind of makes sense now. Like the way he was all like, oh, I could never be your boyfriend. Like him acting all weird about that. That actually makes sense. But yeah, they ruined that very early on i'm kind of glad they did like i'm glad i'm glad imagine like i was there for episodes what would it be six seven and eight like oh yeah i really want chip and imogen to work out they have chemistry i, I feel like well i did actually say they had chemistry as well which kind of sucks looking back in hindsight yeah that's not great <laughs> but look looking back in hindsight now i'm like you know what actually i'm kind of glad they didn't build on that romance more because yeah he, he was a rapist and in terms of an actual character he wasn't great anyway so he can stay down in spencer's british accent all the way down there uh let's do let's do sheriff beasley sheriff measley i think he was a better villain he was more of a clear-cut villain than chip like him and a were like the two main villains of the you know he was kind of looking out for them in the end but from episode one, you knew this guy was like a bit Weasley, a bit Beasley, and he just kind of stuck to that. And the way he was treating Kelly, when he came out with that line in, was it episode nine or ten, when he's like, yeah, it should have been you. You should have died instead of Karen, bro. <laughs> that might have been the worst thing he did, I don't know. But yeah, he, he was... Uh, how How is he sheriff? How was he sheriff? I mean, it's America, it probably makes sense, but... Who's worse? <laughs> Who's worse? Chip or Sheriff Beasley? Pro I'm going to say Beasley because, I mean, Chip's worse of a character. I think Beasley was just very clear-cut villain all the way through. Um, Chip, even when he was meant to be a likeable character, I felt like he never really was. He was okay at times, but uh, I'm glad I didn't get attached to his character, let's put it that way. All right, who else we got? Let's go with... I always want to call this... Oh, Greg. I think his name's Greg. I always want to say Jason, but it's Greg. Let's put him... I'm going to say... Peasant. Uh, boring. 
annoying, full of himself. I know that was the point in his character, but uh, I'm going to put him there. Mm, probably there, actually. He did help out a couple of times, I guess. <laughs> That's like the best thing I can say about him. He helped out a couple of times. So, yeah, he just wasn't likable, though, at all. When he did, he played the jock role and he was the jock. Talking of which, I've completely missed out. Uh, Noah's boyfriend here. Noah's boyfriend would go in okay, probably below Tabby's mum. So imagine, imagine Noah's boyfriend there, because I've completely forgotten that one. But yeah, all the, all the jock characters were just dull. I think that was probably the point. But they were all very dull. They they're never interesting. I think you kind of like jock characters that are interesting, but it's always the cliche now. It's like oh, they're a jock, but they also have feelings. And this show didn't even try with that. It was just like, no, they're jocks and they're all dickheads. It was like, okay, yeah, well, fair enough. <laughs> I kind of respect that in a way. Uh, Tyler's obviously going to go in Spencer's British accent. He didn't rape anyone, so... I mean, that we know of. So he's not going to be below Chip. <laughs> this is awful. Look at these three down here. Rapist Beasley and then Tyler, like an actual racist and homophobe and sexist. So that whole scene was ridiculous, but... Um, <laughs> how do you even order these three? Who's that? <laughs> Who's the most likable out of these three? That's kind of where I'm trying to think now. There's no way you can even. How there's no way you can even explain that one. They're all as bad as each other in different ways. So, yeah, we'll just leave it at that. I think. Uh, let's go with Wes reading a magazine. I don't know what that is boring. I thought Wes was actually going to be more of a main character than he was because it felt like he was really involved at the start of the show and then he disappeared for the entire middle of it and then kind of had a couple of scenes at the end but yeah he was pretty boring to be honest. <laughs> oh we got a lot at the bottom. Don't worry we'll get into the good characters in a minute but let's put him in peasants. Was he more likable than this jock guy? Uh, no, I don't know. <laughs> this is harder than when when you're trying to rank characters you like, characters you don't like. Cause you're trying to decide who's actually worse. Oh, I'm just gonna put him there. This guy was useful. He wasn't useful in like one or two scenes. By the way, that's let's make that very clear. Not useful as a whole. <laughs> uh, but yeah, let's go with that. There's Stu Angela. I'm going to say... Maybe I should add a... Great sounds a bit. Let's put... Good. <laughs> Very simple. Oh no, I've just completely changed the name of that. That's not what I meant. What uh, What was what was that one? The, was it gr the greats? Yeah, let's put the greats. And then I want to add a row below. Um... And put okay, Joe. We need to we need to get on this. Let's sort this out. There we go. I'm gonna put good. Uh, putting her in great sounds too generous, <laughs> to be honest. So we'll put her in good. I felt bad for her. It's the actress from Strange Things, which is kind of cool as well. But yeah, she is she good though? No, maybe she's not. That was a waste of time. <laughs> Delete row because she's not even good. She's okay. We didn't have a, we didn't have enough of her character to be good. She's okay. I felt bad for her, but in terms of her character, we didn't really actually get much. Uh, I think she served the purpose of the flashbacks when it came to the mom characters and the you know the big reveal at the end that it was her brother was a and all that. It was like okay, I guess, and then the principal was her dad, so it worked in that relation, I guess. But in terms of an actual character, we didn't know that much about her which makes sense as well like i said it, she was her focus was just being in the flashbacks and being the focus of this is the character who was bullied and died and you know all the sins the parents did so yeah i'll put her in okay actually probably below that guy no nah, she's more likable than that guy so all right we're coming up to the mains now let's do karen i made sure to make that is definitely karen because she's died here <laughs> Gotta be peasants, probably. Probably there. She was awful. She was awful. I always, always thought Kelly was actually Karen for like 
up to the final few episodes, I was actually surprised they didn't even do that as a storyline. I know Farron was kind of the voice of the audience with that, being like, oh, you're Karen, you pretended to be Kelly and all that, but she was wrong. I mean, unless they do a big reveal of that in season two. <laughs> like, oh no, it actually was Karen the whole time, we got you. Maybe they'll do that, but I hope they don't. I hope they just keep it as Kelly now. You've kind of done it, so uh, yeah. There was some wild stuff Kelly was doing to make it seem that way as well. Like, oh, call me Karen and all that. It's like, what the fuck? She's a twisted human. But Karen was awful. Yeah, for the two episodes we had her in. Rip, I guess. Who actually died out of this lot? He, he died. She died. Is that it? Oh, she died. She died. We have four people here who died. Cause, oh, no. Beasley died right at the end. We saw his body it's on the bed, so he did die. So he's not going to be in the second season, which I'm fine with. All right, let's do a... A, not really a character... Oh, sorry, Archie. Archie Andrews. KJ Apper in a suit. <laughs> that would have been great. He pulls the mask off and it is literally Archie from Riverdale. I would have just... I mean, standing ovation if he did that. They can still do that. They never actually showed his face, so. But then it's like, it's. Is KJ Apple a bit too young to play someone? No, I don't know. Because it would have to be the age of the mums, at least. Anyway, I'm, I'm going with the mindset that KJ Apple's going to pull the mask off. <laughs> Let's go with OK. I, I did not like the mask, honestly. I get what they were trying to do with the stitches making the A. It's like. A, a here felt quite bulky, though, and threatening, which I liked. And, like, A could just fling you around and bash your brains out on walls, but then, oh, we'll get to Imogen. A Imogen destroyed him, so I guess that didn't actually really matter. Uh, but, yeah, he felt like a threatening presence, but I didn't like the mask, and I didn't like the reveal that it was Angela's brother. It was like, okay, well, I, I told you that in episode one, that it was going to be in relation to her, but that's fine. We'll put A... Again, it's hard because it's not really actually a character. It's more just the mask and the persona of A. <laughs> so wait, and I know technically the principal was A as well. So we'll class this as the principal and A because the principal was using him. Well, for kind of mediocre reveal that is. <laughs> it's not the worst, I guess, but it, it's not the best. <laughs> uh, let's go there. Slap bang in the middle. You're okay. You never... I think the most threatening A was was when A killed Tyler. And I think that's it. Yeah. Because he, he was just slamming Tyler around. I think it was Tyler. Uh, in the bathroom. That was a good scene. And A was like proper like storm walking as well, which I liked. He wasn't like this slow kind of methodical walker following everyone. He was like kind of speedy. Which is cool. I hope they keep that up if they have it in season two. But please change, please change the mask, <laughs> just just a bit, just change it a little bit, make it a little bit more threatening. I think you can have season two and have A and B, but be a bit more threatening. Because oh yeah, didn't A kill someone in that work shed as well? Why? That was he was a threat to no one. All right, we've got the main five and Kelly. So let's do Kelly. I'm gonna put Kelly in the greats. Not quite. Okay, here's the, here's my thing. Best of the best. Are we doing that in the realm of this show, or like in the realm of? Okay, if we're doing it in the realm of the show, because like best of the best here and best of the best in like <laughs> Breaking Bad are two very different tiers. <laughs> but for this show, I'd say Kelly was probably one of the better characters. Actually, we got better as the episodes went on. Um, probably one of the better actresses slash actors of the show as well I would say that's the first actor slash actress I've looked at of all the ones that we've done so far and gone yeah they were actually whoever played Kelly I think I actually saw let me check I think the actually played Kelly was in Hereditary let me just double check that and I think I know who it is I think it's the yeah it is Hereditary a 9 I can't even give that a 9 it's clearly a 10 um <laughs> I love Hereditary it's one of my favourite horror films but that's kind of cool. I, th I think I know who she is as well. Is she in the classroom with... I uh, forgot his name. What's his name? Alex Wolf. Yeah. Yeah, I think she's in the classroom with him. It's like his crush or something. So, 
Yeah, I didn't know that until yesterday I saw it on Twitter or something. So, yeah. Cool little fact, I guess. So maybe just for that reason, best of the best. But no, in terms of actors, I think the actor who played Kelly was one of the better ones. And I actually like Kelly as a character. I was always waiting for her to become more evil. Like and then like I said earlier, like pull off the mask and it was Karen the whole time. Not that there'd be a mask, but <laughs> pull off something and then it's just Karen and then it never came to be. Which I'm glad about, so uh, just keep this as Kelly now for sure. And I felt bad for her. Like her family life with Beasley, oh my lord, she had it the worst of the worst. So yeah. Kelly was pretty good. Let's go with We'll do the weakest for me out of the the lies was Tabby. <sighs> Which, even though she wasn't the... She was number four on the poll. So I'm assuming most people like her. For me, Tabby has a few ups and quite a few downs. I think the film references were egregious. It was just too much. I get what they were trying to do. is like, ah, uh, you know, the nerd who references film. And I, I love me some film. Don't get me wrong. But when it was that much, it became... I mean, I laughed every time it happened. So maybe that was the point. But it became a bit annoying well very annoying <laughs> to be fair like the fact Imogen was talking about a dead mum and then Tabby just came out with like oh it's like the film Chucky or whatever she said it was like yeah all right great timing on that one Tabby uh personally for me some people disagreed in comments but personally for me I never bought the re the friendship between her and Imogen I just it's not to do with the actress's actors chemistry on screen I'm sure they're great friends in real life and not, you know that's fine but I think it's the dialogue between them just felt a little bit forced at times. So I never bought that friendship. Um, her own storyline was never great. I think it got better in the last three, four episodes, which I thought was good. But early on in the season, her storyline wasn't great. Uh, so yeah, not a fan of Tabby, personally. But I can see why people do like it. I, I wanted to like her, but... I mean, she's the one who did the film references. I really should have liked Tabby's character, but I just couldn't. So I'm going to put her in Peasants. <laughs> like, there. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Out of all the lies, she was the most annoying, honestly. Just, I think, I don't know what it was. It was the film references. It was the storyline. It, oh, and also like using Tabby, I think for like a like I said in that one episode where they were talking about homophobia, racism, white privilege, uh, self harming, uh, murder, suicide, everything under the umbrella. They were talking about it all in one episode. Uh, it was that was a little bit wild. It's like okay, I don't. <laughs> why do we tackle these like maybe a few at a time? But it's like no, we're doing them all <laughs> in one episode. And I think that was a lot of like Tabby's storyline as well. So. Uh, but yeah, Tabby maybe can get better in season two. We'll see. Then we'll go with my fourth favorite, which is Mouse. Mouse was pretty good in the early episodes. I was like, okay, we'll see where Mouse's character goes. I think the storyline was a bit intriguing. Then the storyline got worse and worse and worse. It just felt like, and I still don't understand why was she doing what she was doing. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna help parents out, or also dads who have lost a child. Oh, okay. And then that's the end of that storyline. Okay. And then she found a dad. They had one conversation. Then he was gone. So and maybe that's more of a setup for a second season, possibly. But yeah, it just felt like it ended very quickly. Her parents were awful. So that's great. The actress was decent. I think the actress was decent. So I'm going to put Mouse in okay. Above Ash. Above him. Uh, yeah, I'll put her at the top of OK, I think. I think in the early episodes, she was my favourite in like episodes one and two. Oh no, maybe episode one, and then it was Noah. Like I said in the finale last episode, uh, my favourite actually changed quite a lot in the show, which doesn't typically happen, but Miles hopefully gets a bit of a better storyline in season two, um, if they have a season two. So, right, my third favourite out of the liars, I'm going to go with Noah, who we're going to put in the grace. I th she was my favourite from episodes, I want to say, two all the way to six and then her storyline no two to five maybe her storyline was pretty good when it came to her mom i think it was one of the best storylines she was the most likable uh, she was kind of the voice of reason for quite a few of the moments where they were just pissing about so and it felt like her and her boyfriend probably kind of had a bit of chemistry i guess but 
that kind of came to a bit more of a standstill in the later episodes. Noah's like had the inhaler, then threw that away, then just trying to get her mom into rehab. It's just kind of more of the same. And it's like, maybe seeing if her dad, uh, dad seeing if her boyfriend's doping or not. And it's like, okay, the storyline got a bit dry with Noah, but she always stayed likable, which I liked. She never annoyed me. A lot. There's probably a couple of times. It's pre little lies, of course, there's going to be moments like that. But yeah, she never became too egregious with being annoying. So yeah, Noah in the greats. Then my second favourite out of the lies, Imogen, who I'm surprised by. She was my least favourite for the first couple of episodes alongside Tabby. And then she became a badass. <laughs> she, Yo, she took pretty much took down A and never confirmed the kill, unfortunately. But when she was beating the shit out of A, that was actually pretty cool. Uh, I liked her storyline. Like, her being pregnant, I didn't care so much about it in the earlier episodes. But then the more it kind of took an effect on Imogen's character as the episodes went on and her realising that she doesn't have her mum there to help her with the baby. And I think that settled in more in her character as it went on because she even says, said, like, it, it didn't really hit her that mum was gone until around episode four or five. I can't remember exactly which episode. So I think that was good stuff. Um, yeah, the actress was good. I think she was one of the actresses who actually improved. I know they don't shoot them in order, but she seemed to improve as the season went on. What else? Like I've already said, I never really bought a friendship with Tabby. Uh, she did have some unlikable moments for sure. But overall, I'm going to put her in. I'll say the greats. Not quite best of the best because the first few episodes she was kind of frustrating, but she improved a lot for me. She she became really likable and her storyline, like I said, and the conversation she had with her dad in episode nine or ten or whatever it was, I actually really liked. I uh, really liked that scene. So, and then we have Farron, who of course is my favorite out of the lies. I preferred Kelly personally, but I think Farron had the best storyline, which they kind of dropped in the last two three episodes, which was strange. But her own disability, I felt like was kind of a not an original or unique storyline they've definitely had that in storylines but from like i said in the reactions for me uh having watched a lot of tv shows i can't think of many where they uh spoke about this uh, at least a dancer having a disability like that as well and then having their mom kind of know about it make it worse than it needed to be and being abusive about that i felt like that whole storyline with farron and then like her rivalry with kelly slash karen and then the teacher being a twat as well and then a love interest. Farron had it all. And she was also the voice of reason the whole time. Like, can we go to the police? Can we do it? It's like, yeah, can we listen to Farron maybe? No one ever did, of course. But I think they did right at the end. They're like, okay, now we'll listen to Farron and go to the police. But And she was likeable the whole time. I think there were a couple of moments like when, like when she was talking to Kelly. And she was like saying her words really slowly for dramatic effect, I guess. But every character was doing that, so we can't hold Farron, I guess, up for that one. Everyone was doing it. But yeah, she was most likable. So in terms of the lies, we have Farron, Noah, and Imogen, I think, were actually pretty good. Mouse never quite reached the potential I thought she was going to, and Tabby just was annoying a lot of the time, unfortunately. Uh, but like I say, I'm open to if season two comes about and Tabby's the greatest character and has the best storyline, I'll admit that, and then Tabby can go to the top. But for now, based on season one, I'm happy with that list. Quite, a, I think this is. <laughs> On the list where there's quite a lot of characters down at the bottom. Yeah. But we did have some likeable ones. We got there. I'm just looking at how many are in Peasants. We have basically all the mum characters, apart from one. <laughs> which is Tabby's mum. All the jocks are pretty much there. Tabby's down there. Wes is down there, Karen's down there. Then we have the three actual scumbags of the show down at the bottom. Um, and the middle, Mouse, Angela, that guy, Ash. I literally don't know his name. I can't, I can't even remember his name, but yeah. Ash, uh, A, the mom, Zeke. And then three of the lies towards the top, which is pretty good, actually. Pretty good odds. That's at least three of the lies, uh, the lies were likeable. So... And then Kelly at the top, which is a, a surprise. I just think, like I said, I was surprised like how good of a character she became and how interesting the story was like, when it came to her dad and stuff. So, yeah. And the mum being like an intense Christian as well and all that religious stuff was kind of cool. But overall, like I said, season one was okay. 
It had a lot of ups, had a lot of downs. I kind of I am rooting for it to get a second season, and I hope they improve on it and just drop like trying to force feed us the Riverdale vibes so much. I think this show can be its own thing. I get it's the same creators and all that. I get that, but you can still have it be its own thing. You don't need to force feed us <laughs> Riverdale vibes every five seconds. So if they can break out of that, I think this show could uh, be pretty good i don't know if it's going to be on the level of like the gossip girl reboot because that's actually been very solid i think the acting and that's very good and the storylines as well and they touch on relevant subjects and world issues and do it pretty well do it better than this show um so maybe they can improve on a lot of ways but maybe they, maybe they're just happy with this season and want to continue doing what they're doing which is fine as well but you know i'm not a I'm not a director or a creator of a TV show or anything, so who am I to tell? But that's my thoughts on it anyway. They're my thoughts on the characters. Let me know who you're... Who, let me know who you put in best of the best and the greats. Because I'm assuming we all agree on who's in Spencer's British accent. I don't think anyone's disagreeing on, <laughs> on those three at least. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. Leave a like if you enjoyed. I'll see you for season two, episode one, if it gets it. If not, then this, I guess this will be the last original Sim video that I do. Which is kind of mad, but we'll see. Until next time, take care. Peace.